dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in the gospel for this mass in honor of St. Bonaventure, the reading chosen is that of this discourse in which our Lord tells us our identity, how he sees us and wants us to see ourselves in the world. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. And then he goes on to show what we shouldn't be or shouldn't do. What if salt goes flat? It's worth nothing other than to be trampled underfoot. And a light is set on a stand so that all may see it, not put under a bushel basket. St. Bonaventure, was in his time, and actually in all of history, one of the greatest minds ever to shine in the world, not just in the church. His great intellect and love for God's creation led him to look into all things, uh, to study all creatures and in them to see God. So creation for St. Bonaventure is a pathway to God. But when it comes to decide which is greater, knowledge or love, he clearly states that love is the greatest. In fact, uh, when he was the minister general several um, decades after St. Francis passed, Brother Giles, still alive, asked him whether uh, the, a, a little old lady, unschooled and without knowledge, could love God as much as one of the learned theologians. And St. Bonaventure affirmed that yes, she could. And this caused great glee for Blessed Giles, who was simple and who thought that uh, knowledge and love of God um, were maybe not compatible. But St. Bonaventure, though he affirms that love is greater, still shines as one of the great minds and is even credited by some as being uh, really giving the impetus in Western civilization to empirical science. That's how uh, much he revered knowledge. But when it comes to knowledge, or to the intellect and to the will, it's the will that has the greater place because it is by the will that we love God. And so loving God then uh, is something that we as Christians must make our prime rule. In fact, the Lord told us, what is the greatest commandment? Love God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. And love your neighbors yourself. And so I think it bears repeating. I said it in a recent homily, and really it's, it's becoming clear that there is a great confusion about what love really is. And the greatest love, of course, is that of Jesus Christ, who is God, and God is love. And so he showed us what it means to be love as a human being. And he gives us these teachings. And so I think uh, the, the message I'm, I'd like to convey today is the need for us today in this confused world to identify with Jesus Christ and to love Christ. The greatest of all the virtues is charity. And charity, in, in essence, is identification in love. When we love somebody, when we love them with a Christ-like love, then we want what is best for them. And we identify with the things, when it comes to love of Christ, we identify with what he loves, and we reject or abhor that which he rejects or abhors, which, of course, is sin. Jesus hates sin because it's sin that separates souls from him. So he's against sin, but he's always for the sinner. And so we're called then, brothers and sisters, to be this light of the world, to proclaim that love, which is not a chaotic and disordered love, but 
a very ordered love. And in the first place is love of God. The, the error today, the supreme error of, of our age, is a reversal of the order of things or a confusion about what is the order of love. And in fact, the new world order, you've heard that term, uh, as far as I'm concerned, the problem with the new world order is that it establishes man in the position of God. And this is disorder. This is the definition of disorder. Uh, love of God has to be supreme. Acknowledgement of God and the pursuit of his will for us to make his will our will, or for, rather, I should say, to make our will his will, is, is the pathway to happiness and salvation. But what the world today, the New World Order does, is say that God doesn't matter if he even exists, and all that is really important is what man desires and what man wills. And this is a lie. Man doesn't define right and wrong. Man only can apprehend through the intellect and through knowledge of the truth what is right and what is wrong. And that's what Christ came to teach us. And he said, if you love me, you will obey my commands. So, brothers and sisters, we have to, as Christians, identify with Jesus Christ and proclaim his truth to be that light and that salt. Salt is a preservative. We have to uh, give that flavor to the world, to the culture of what, what is really life-giving and preserving, which is this truth, and also, you know, proclaim or denounce what is not true and what is not right. So St. Francis said to his friars, and I think this is true for every Christian, and it's in the chapter on, on being missionaries, he gives a number of quotes from Christ, which make the point I'm trying to, to underscore here, that we have to identify with Christ to the point now, in this day and age, being counterculture and going out of our comfort zone, because a lot of the things that need to be said, the world doesn't want to hear. But if we're going to be salt, we have to give some flavor. And it's not the flavor of the world, it's the flavor of Christ. So St. Francis tells the friars, no matter where they are, the friars must always remember that they have given themselves up completely and handed over their whole selves to our Lord Jesus Christ. This should be true for every Christian. In baptism, we become the property of God. We give ourselves to God and are marked with the sign of Christians. And so our lives really belong to Christ. And so they should be prepared to expose themselves to every enemy visible or invisible, for love of him. He himself tells us, he who loses his life for my sake will save it for eternal life. Blessed are they who suffer persecution for justice's sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. If they have persecuted you, they will, if they have persecuted me, they will persecute you also. When they persecute you in one town, flee to another. Blessed are you when men reproach you and persecute you, and speaking falsely say all manner of evil against you for my sake. Rejoice on that day and exult, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. I say to you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body and after that have nothing more that they can do. Take care that you do not be alarmed. By your patience, you will win your souls. He who has persevered to the end will be saved. Now those are a number of different quotes run together, but they're all from different parts of the scripture and it shows how, just how much Christ tells us that we're going to suffer if we're going to be his disciples. If we identify with Jesus Christ, whose whole purpose is uh, to show mankind the love of the Father and to save our souls. If we're going to identify with Christ and love him, which is what St. Bonaventure says is supreme. It's not just to know the truth. That's not, that's not the greatest thing. It's to love the truth, to love Christ, and to identify with him. And today for us in the 21st century, in this world that's trying to erect a, a system of organization without God, which is the Antichrist, 
we have to be the Christ in an antichrist world, which means we're going to suffer. But this is the greatest of the virtues. And St. Bonaventure, the great mind uh, of his time, made it clear that, that love was more important and that even the unlearned could love God, perhaps better than a learned theologian who lacks love. So, brothers and sisters, let us ask through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Queen of the Seraphic Order, and through the prayers of the Seraphic Doctor, uh, a greater identification with Jesus Christ, a greater understanding of the Gospel, and of our obligation before the Lord to, to be His witnesses, motivated by love of Him, and following the path that He set before us, and then we can be assured of eternal life. Praise be Jesus and Mary.